Hello, hello, everyone. Oh, sorry, Aubrey. <laughs> I just took it's that okay. over and <laughs> let Aubrey be on here. <laughs> How is everyone today? How are you today, Aubrey? Well, well, we're both suffering through a cold, so I apologize great. that I virtually coughed on everyone. It probably won't be the last time today, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, so, but no, we're doing pretty good. How about you, Sarah? Doing good. I was laughing at this, the countdown slide because it said doing cartwheels with Sarah. And I told Aubrey right before we went live, I have actually, this is a little fun fact about me that no one asked for, but I have actually never done a cartwheel. Not once in my life. I am no gymnast. My feet stay on the floor. <laughs> so I don't I th think I, just I, thought it was funny. I don't think. I can do a cartwheel and I'm not a gymnast. So I feel like if you maybe if you just would have tried a little bit while you were younger, don't try it now if you don't. <laughs> yeah. My four year old's also trying to get me to do somersaults. Can't do those anymore. I mean, when I was a kid, I could. As an adult, I just like to stay upright. So no somersaults yeah. either. But why would you can want to? A unless it's a quilt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This I can handle. An actual cartwheel? No, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you guide me, you tell me what to do. Well, we're going to, we, I titled this cartwheels with Sarah because we have a design called cartwheels or cartwheel. Um, now <clears throat> this isn't a brand new design. This is one that we've had out a couple years now, I would say. Um, but what I love about this design is it's, it's one of the very few where it's really fun to play with a print in terms of fabric, right? Yes. So a lot of times we like to use solids or batiks because it really allows the quilting to be the star in the quilt, which we love because the quilting is always included with Hoop Sisters. And the designers do a fabulous job, Sarah being one of them. Um, with all that quilting. So we like to use that. But in this particular one, Sarah pulled out in this sample a really cool print. And I yeah. think this one's so fun. We actually did this um, one time we did a live and we did this in Halloween colors. Yeah. If you remember? We did. We did. I did. I do remember because whenever um, I come on to do a live, if I get to pick what I'm doing, I really like to stitch this block. And it looks awesome. Your idea. In Halloween. <laughs> well, and I also think it's surprising. It's also surprising to me where the block is in this quilt, which I think is yeah. another thing that you guys will get to see today when Sarah stitches this out. Um, my eye goes to the actual pinwheel thinking that's the block and it's right. not. Um, right. And so anyways, I think this is just a super fun one. It's the, like a traditional pinwheel, but you can really kind of modernize it depending on what fabrics you use. So I think that's a really fun touch. Um, also, it's 20% off today. I want to say, yeah, I should have looked this up. Is it 45 exciting. originally? Um, yes. So 20% off to today. What's that? It brings it down to $36. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. It's really weird not being in the same room with you. But um, so is. we'll pop the link to order because it'll be an automatic savings through Thursday, tomorrow night at midnight. So it's just a really fun, cute design. And Sarah is going to stitch that out for us today, probably share some tips and tricks with you along the way. And then we can come back. I've got a couple announcements and I do have a giveaway today, Sarah. Awesome. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to take it from here, Aubrey, for a little bit, and I'm going to stitch that block. But before I jump over to my machine, because Aubrey was talking about on this quilt that this one in particular, it's kind of hard to tell where the blocks are because your eye is drawn to those pinwheels. I just thought I'd show you that this is one of the blocks. So you have four different fabrics in each block. So I've got four fabrics today and we're gonna head over to the machine and stitch out that block. Thank you. Okay, so over at the machine, I did, I think I'm on step four already. I did a couple things ahead of time. So I have my batalizer, which is our batting and stabilizer combination already in the hoop. That's the only thing that you need to um, hoop with batalizer, just that one product. And then I also did step one, which was to sew the placement stitch. So that's kind of like the edges of the block that will stitch. 
And you'll do that with a water soluble thread. I did that with a navy thread so that we could see it on camera a little better. Um, but step one was to sew the placement stitch. Step two, this is an optional step if you want. You can add um, wool batting. Like with many of our quilts, you have this optional step. Now, I, I think some designs tend to um, work better with, with wool batting and as opposed to others. This design, I think, is one that really lends itself to using the wool batting because it's got larger feathered quilting in it. So you can see a lot of that dimension. But if you want to use it, you will just cut it to size and prepare it by pressing the edges and then just align that right in your placement stitch. And with the water soluble thread, you can sew the zigzag tack down. I went ahead and I'm skipping that for the demonstration today. And I moved it right on to step three, which was to sew our placement stitch. My machine's trying to go to sleep. Okay, and now I've got, I picked four fun fabrics, just fun. Um, this is Michael Miller's from their Fresco line of fabric. I love it. It's kind of got a little variation to it. So it's just a really fun fabric to use for, I would say, almost any design. So for step four, and Annie, if you're listening, would you mind to grab my instructions? I forgot those and I wanted to have those um, just to reference, just in case they're on my cutting table. Okay, so for step four, I'm going to take one of my four fabrics and I'm going to align that in my placement stitching in this lower right hand corner. And what I like about this design too is it's really just a bunch of strips of fabric. So it's really easy and quick to cut your fabric to prepare to stitch as well. So now with the water soluble thread, we're gonna sew the tack down. Thank you, sorry. And now I'm going to use my hoop scissors. I actually just, I have my minis here, so that's what I'm using. But I'm just going to trim my fabric. You want to trim it a scant quarter inch on the inside edge of the block. And then you're going to want to leave at least a half inch of fabric on those outside edges. And when you trim it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's one of the great things about quilting the hoop. Okay, so you can see here, hopefully, let me see if I can see that on my screen. Yes, okay, so there's, it stitched a double line over on this left-hand side. So the outside part is what's tacking it down, and then this is another reason to use water-soluble thread for this particular step. This inside line is actually gonna end up being a placement line for when we place this very last piece of fabric, so keep that in mind. Okay, so for step five, we are going to take our next piece of fabric and I'm going to place that right side down. So I've got it right side down. Approximately align the raw edges with that first fabric that we just placed. And then with a the neutral colored thread, we're gonna sew our seam. Now we'll take that fabric and flip that right side up. Finger press and smooth out. And then with that same thread and the needle, you can sew the tack down. I'm going to leave all of the excess fabric on the outside edge of my hoop, my block. And then again, I'm going to use my hoop scissors to trim a scant quarter inch from that tack down stitching. Okay. Now we're gonna do that same stitch and flip process again. So we're gonna lay our fabric, our next piece of fabric, right side down. The raw edges are approximately even with the last fabric that I just placed. 
And now we're going to sew the seam. All right, we'll take that, flip that right side up, finger press and smooth out. And then we're going to sew our tack down. And then again, we'll trim this the same way. So just a scant quarter inch from that tack down stitching. And now we have one more piece of fabric to place. So we'll take our fabric, place it right side down again. Raw edges are approximately even. And then we're gonna sew our seam. Okay, so now here's where the fun happens. I'm gonna trim off some of this fabric over on this left-hand side, just cause I don't need that whole strip over there. You can wait until you tack down your fabric and trim if you want to, that's totally fine. So now, the, now we need to figure out how to lay this piece down so that we get a nice crisp, crisp fold because there is no satin stitch that's going to cover up a raw edge or anything like that. So this is where that first place, that first tack down of my green fabric, that placement stitch, remember how it had that double line? That inside stitch is our placement stitch. So when we fold this over, we want to match up with that placement stitch. But before we fold it over, I'm going to recommend that you fold your strip of fabric back over onto itself and our instructions I will show you before we sign off today they have a step-by-step -step picture showing all of this to you so you're gonna fold this back over and when I fold my salmon colored fabric I'm gonna fold it right along this line between my fuchsia and my blue fabric I'm gonna kind of match that seam and then you can just kind of finger press it Now, right along this fold, I'm going to trim my salmon colored fabric so that it has about a quarter inch seam um, allowance left in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can just eyeball it. That's one thing we love about quilting the hoop, right? It does not have to be perfect because everything's digitized into the machine for you so it knows exactly where to stitch. Okay, so I've got that trimmed. I'm gonna fold that again and just finger press it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my piece of fabric while maintaining this fold that I have right here and I'm gonna fold it over so that the right side is up. Now I want my fold to be right along my placement stitch and it is. I'm just going to keep smoothing it out and then I'm going to put it back on my hoop back on my machine and with a water soluble thread in the needle. Now we're going to sew the tack down around those edges. Okay, the hard part is done. We've got everything um, tacked down where it should be. Now we still have, if you're paying attention, we still have this, um, let me try my threads first. Goodness. We still have not attached this part right here. So you can see how I still have an opening right here and my scissors go right under that. But this next step is gonna take care of that. So you can use 
any thread color that works with your design and coordinates with your fabrics, and we are gonna sew the decorative stitch. Sarah, mom wants to know if she can hang the quilt in her office. Sure. <laughs> All yours. Just, you can't have it yet, though. <laughs> <laughs> I should have told her if she can do a cartwheel, she can have it. There you go. And that decorative <laughs> stitch is so pretty. In fact, I it see is. it looks like behind the scenes here you have some instructions. I don't know if. Yes, I do. You, I feel like. We, they still haven't seen how gorgeous the quilting turns out. Should I put that I, up on the screen? I feel like it's a good picture. Give it a try. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully you guys can Sorry, see I that. Sorry, up there too. That's okay. And you'll <laughs> see it when she gets to this part of the block too, but there's feather quilting on there and it pops. It is really beautiful. Has anyone made this yes. yet? Yeah, it does. And... The decorative stitching is really pretty, and I like that you can kind of decide whether you want that to really show in your quilt, or, sorry, my machine just made noise, if you want it to really show in your quilt, or if you kind of want it to blend in a little more. Um, and the sample behind me that's also pictured on the screen, it does blend in a little more, um, but I'm using a navy thread on the block that I'm stitching today, and so it would pop out a little more. So it's mm -hmm. fun that you can just kind of customize it to what you want. Um, I did want to, while this is going, so the second page in our instructions, I just wanted to go through a couple of them. This will just show you the fabric layout. So there are six total fabrics in this particular quilt, and this page will show you the fabric layout, and then um, supply chart like normal. This page I wanted to point out. This is a, a fabric location key. So there are only three different files. This comes in two different sizes. Each size has three, three different files associated with this quilt. So you've got a corner block, you've got an edge block, and then you've got your blocks that are in the center. If you just follow this fabric location key, it will tell you how many blocks you need to stitch with which fabric numbers in it. So this is very important. I think that might be, yes, that was the last thing I wanted to touch on. And you can see up in that upper right-hand corner, that those are the three different files that I was referencing just now. And then Aubrey has a helpful banner that says this comes in five and eight inch blocks. Okay, back over to our block. Now that we have that decorative stitch done, this is the point where you can choose to add um, backing fabric in the hoop if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and do that today. So. I'm gonna take my hoop off my machine. I'm going to lay it on a flat surface. Now, this is very important that when you're doing things like this or you're trimming in the hoop, that you lay your hoop on a hard flat surface. You don't wanna place your hoop with your block in it in your lap while you're placing your backing fabric because that is a recipe for um, shifting in your hoop a little bit. And you don't want to your block to shift because then things will be out of alignment and you'll have to start over. So definitely make sure if you're ever trimming or adding fabric to your block that it's laying on a hard flat surface like this is. Okay, I aligned my backing fabric over the back of my block. I'm gonna take it and just gently turn it over and lay my hoop flat again. Place my hoop back on my machine. And now with a water soluble thread and the needle for this part, we are gonna sew the tack down. And this is just tacking on um, the back of my block. So we are 
on the last step already. And this last step is that feathered quilting that Aubrey was talking about. Now for this step, because I have my backing fabric on, on the back of my hoop, I did just go ahead and turn off my automatic um, thread cutter. I'm also going to bring my bobbin thread to the top of my block just by doing needle down, needle up. And I also am making sure that the thread in my bobbin matches the thread in my needle. So that's three things that you have to do when you're adding the backing fabric in the hoop. Turn off your automatic thread cutter, match your bobbin thread to the thread in the needle, and bring your bobbin thread to the top of your block before you start stitching. And those three things combined make for a really nice clean back. While that's stitching, Aubrey, do you want me to answer any questions that we might have? Yeah, I don't I don't think I see any that we haven't answered, but maybe you could okay. share those tips again because, dang, I, I just put in the comments. I wish I would have had those on banners to share. So maybe just say those again because I think those are really, really helpful tips. For when you add the back? Yeah, to make sure that and your back's okay. nice and clean after your fabric's on the back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's three three things that you always need to do when you're adding your backing fabric in the hoop. And if you skip that step and you are doing a one-piece backing, you do not need to do these three things, but you won't see the quilting on the back side. So since I added the backing fabric in the hoop, I matched my bobbin thread to the thread in the needle. I turned off my automatic thread cutter and I brought the bobbin thread to the top of my block before I started stitching. And each of those three things help you avoid nesting of thread on the back of your block, and they create a really nice clean look to where sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between the front and the back unless there's piecing um, and satin stitching and things like that that aren't showing through. <clears throat> so I do see a so question, do you says, see it? Yep, go ahead. Um, how, how do you end the stitching and cut the thread when the thread cutter is turned off? So you would just cut the thread when you reach the bot or the end of a step. So on this step, you can kind of see the order in which it's stitching. You do not need to stop it in the middle of the step and trim threads. When, when we tell you to turn off that automatic thread cutter, we're doing that when we're test sewing typically. So we're kind of making sure that the way that it's digitized your foot isn't gonna get caught under there um, and rip threads or anything like that. So there's no need in this design to stop it in the middle and cut those threads. You can just trim them when your block is done stitching. And now you're starting to see that feather quilting. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, Joni said she just posted a picture of her cartwheel cartwheel quilt to the VIP group, the Facebook VIP group. That's awesome, Joni. Thank you. Thank you. see a lot of cartwheel comments, but if you didn't see, um, Aubrey has the banner at the bottom of the screen. Go ahead and comment cartwheel to be entered to win $20 in store credit. And Nina just popped in those tips again. That's super helpful. Like those are fantastic little tips. And <clears throat> Nina, if you wouldn't mind, after we get some, um, after some cartwheel comments come through so your link doesn't get buried, maybe you could post the shopping link again. Cause again, it's 20% off this design through end of, well, through midnight tomorrow night. 
And Sarah, someone asked what Janome machine you're using. It also looks like you're doing a five inch from my view, but maybe let us know what size block you're doing too. Yep, doing a five inch block on a Janome 15,000. There okay, you go. so my block is done stitching. So at this point, I apologize. I don't remember who asked, but someone asked about trimming um, if your automatic thread cutter is turned off. So at this point is when I could go in and, and I can just trim those threads away. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this over to my cutting table and I'll take it out of the hoop and I'll trim it up real quick. We're not going to do a trimming demo today, but I'll trim it um, and then I'll show you guys our final block. And while she's doing that, if it's okay, Sarah, yeah, <coughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I was really trying not to cough on you. Um, <laughs> but while Sarah is doing that, I do want to let you guys all know, um, if you haven't seen it yet, we do have one of our virtual quilt hops coming <coughs> up. Sarah, we started virtual quilt hops, you're not going to believe this, but four years ago. Can you believe What'd that? What you say, Aubrey? Four we started doing those four years ago. It it, it's crazy like how time flies, isn't it? It really is. So virtual <laughs> quilt hop, if you're not familiar with virtual quilt hop, get ready because it's so much fun. It's an evening event, which we don't do too many of just because we've got little kids and all that kind of stuff at home. <coughs> Excuse me. But think of it like a trunk show sort of like a semi-annual sale. We do, we are going to stitch a block out of a design live, um, but it'll be kind of quickly and, and just give you some tips in that regard too. But we also do multiple giveaways in this, this particular night. Um, we also have what we call story time. We fill you in on how, why certain products are named what they are, how we came up with them, different things like that. So it's just a lot of fun. Um, and there's 24 hour shopping specials that you will not want to miss. So if you have a wish list, you need to be here this night. These specials only last 24 hours. We're going to be hosting this March 21st, which is next Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. <coughs> excuse me, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. So um, you will want to register for this event. If Nina could drop the registration link, that would be fantastic. And when you do register, you get the cutest little block um, that it won't let me add to. There we go. Um, you get this <laughs> adorable little needle and thread block that Sarah made as our free gift. And thank you. So this will be something that you guys can play with before the event even begins, just to give you a little taste of Hoop Sisters, and to kind of celebrate its National Quilting Month. So all that wrapped up into one. So Nina will drop the link. You guys go get registered for that, and I'll tune you back into Sarah for more cartwheels. <laughs> and so Aubrey was just talking about virtual quilt hop, too. Cartwheel is not going to be included in our virtual quilt hop. Right. So you're going to get pricing while this promotion is live. But here is our final block. And like Aubrey said at the very beginning, you could use so many, so many fun, fun prints with this one. Um, it lends itself well to that. You can see I've got kind of a wild print and then not picking up on camera, but each of these fabrics does have a little bit of a print to it. So really fun um, use of prints in this design. But this is cartwheel. Maggie says she always has a wish list. She's registered for Virtual Quilt Hop. Awesome. Yeah, Virtual Quilt Hop is really, really fun. And like Aubrey said, I, I do think of it as like our semi-annual semi sale. You can yeah. get some really, really good steals during that, that little flash sale. Oh, yeah. It's going right. to be a lot of fun. Even just like hanging out and I'm going to get rid of your, I'm going to get rid of this camera. Um, even just hanging out, like it, I like that it's an evening event. So it gives, it gives it kind of like just kind of a more fun hang out with us type of vibe. Um, if you're right. not getting that already, I think we're pretty, we're kind of entertaining, right? <laughs> also, I like this person's name over on YouTube. It says quilt ma, like grandma, but quilt ma. <laughs> I think that's so oh, cute. I'm gonna pop it in. That is cute. Yeah. Very cute. Adorable. Okay. So if you have not done so already and good prizes, yes, multiple prizes throughout the event. So 
Um, oh, there's a good question. Lois asked, will there be an open house this summer? So stay tuned because we will have an she announcement. It specifically does say Lima, though. It does say Lima. So okay. um, <laughs> it's not going to be in Lima. We are going to have sort of... Um, We'll, we'll send more information out, but since you guys are asking live, we'll talk about it real quick. There will, I'm not going to give you the dates and everything yet because I don't have it in front of me and I think I know what they are, but I don't want to say something wrong. We are going to have <laughs> sort of a pop-up shop open house in Illinois at Sewing Concepts, which is our co-founder, Linda Remmer's, her store. So it's going to be really amazing. She has a giant classroom area on one side. And then she has her her store on the other side. So it's going to be a fantastic event. I think you guys are really going to love it. Um, so stay tuned. It will be in August. That's all I'm saying right now. But we will put out information on that very, very soon. It will not be in Lima, though. <laughs> but Lois, you can come see us anytime. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm pretty sure Lois is <laughs> here in Lima. So come see us anytime. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. So I think um, giveaway time. If you have nothing else, Sarah. Let's do it. All right. So last chance to type the word cartwheel in the comments. And I'm going to share my screen and we are going to do this giveaway. And the giveaway today is for $20 in store credit. Hopefully you guys can see my screen okay. Anybody else? There we go. Got a couple more. Okay, I'm going to draw the winner. <clears throat> you could always use $20 in store credit, right? <laughs> and Sarah and I are not going to be coughing next Thursday night. No, Sharon A no. over on YouTube. <clears throat> you are I'm the winner. Sharon. So what you're going to want to do, <clears throat> I'm sorry. What you're going to want to do. Robin says, can... Robin says, happy hour. <laughs> happy hour, yeah. That's when virtual public is, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let us know what you're going to be drinking during happy hour. Are you going to be tea? <laughs> are you going to be like sleepy time tea? Or are you going to have um, a glass of wine and hang out with us? Let us know. Um, so, <laughs> so contact Nina. Um our winner and do so within five days so we can make sure to get that store credit into your account. So within the next five days, might as well just do it right now real quick. Go ahead and email Nina, N-I-N-A at hoopsisters.com. Let her know that you just won $20 in store credit for the Cartwheel Live and she will pop that into your account. Coke Zero. I love Coke Zero. Hot tea. Perfect. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to drink a bunch of caffeine right before, but I also don't want to fall asleep. But I do think <laughs> eight o'clock at night in Ohio, now that the time changes happen, feels like yes, six, you know, <laughs> it makes yeah, a big it helps difference. helps a lot. Yeah. Someone said decaf. It's just hard coffee. to wake up because it's dark out now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you all. Well, thank you for hanging out with us. Um, Sarah, you should have showed that block the free gift. Let me pop that back in here because it's so stinking cute. You know what? And then I don't, I yeah. don't have it. Let me go grab it. You want me to grab it real quick? If you don't mind, but I don't know how long people I'll are going to stay on. But here's mm -hmm. the block again. And Nina, if you wouldn't mind dropping that. And once you guys get this and you make it, post it in our VIP group. Um, Joni, you done yet? You're always first. You always have it done. <laughs> go ahead and um, get registered download this free gift and post it in our VIP group because it is stinking adorable. And this is just the beginning of the, ver oh, your camera is terrible. I that know it's so dark. Better. That picture is better, honestly. <coughs> Excuse yeah, me. Super cute. This is kind of inspired from um, a design of ours called Threads Up too. Yeah. And so. some of you might have it. So if you do, you can um, have a little coordinating a little freebie there. Okay. So thank you for dropping all the links, Nina. So go take advantage of 20% off cartwheel. That will not be in our virtual quilt hop. So you're safe to order it knowing you're getting a really yeah. good price on it. Robin's drinking the wine. Awesome. Um, for virtual quilt hop. Maybe not right now. Yeah. Will be <laughs> Perfect. So we'll just all hang out next Thursday night and have a lot of fun. We will see you there. Um, so go get registered. Anything else, Sarah? All right. All right. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.